Welcome to my channel and thank you for clicking on my video. This is my second Let's Do Lunch video where I invite those who may be living alone and struggling with eating disorder recovery to join me for lunch or whatever meal you fancy having whilst watching this. Last week I got such a positive response to my Let's Do Lunch video that I thought why not do another one? So here I am. It's not my usual type of content and the way that I edit this video is going to be different to normal. If you don't have an eating disorder, you're welcome to watch, but it may not be for you. If that's the case or if you're finding it in any way unhelpful, please do click on to one of my other videos. Hopefully there'll be something on my channel that you will enjoy. Someone did mention to me that they would find it quite helpful to actually make lunch with me in real time. So today I'm actually going to take you through to the kitchen where I will be making my lunch. You can skip forward through that part if it's not something that will be helpful for you. I'm going to be having soup and bread. You, of course, can have whatever you like for lunch. And as I said before, Please don't compare what you're eating to what I'm eating. Everyone's nutritional needs are different and everyone is on a different point in their recovery journey. If, however, you want food inspiration, soup and bread. There we go. So this is the soup that I am going to be having and I am going to weigh it out because if I try and do it by sight, I always judge it wrong. I'm having half the can, which is what the can says on the back to have. Just as I did with the last videos, I'll be doing voiceovers during the points when I'm eating, or in this case, doing something very, very noisy in the kitchen, just so that you don't have long periods of silence or just the noise of a microwave to listen to. You can let me know if you find prepping your meal while I'm prepping mine is helpful for you, even if we're not having the same thing, or if you'd rather I didn't include it. I'm going to be microwaving my soup because you're currently standing on the cooker hob. I think when you're in recovery, it can be quite useful to use plates, cutlery, bowls, etc for any meals or snacks that you are having and to actually sit down at the table and eat and not be picking while you're in the kitchen if that's something that you tend to do that could potentially lead you to binge. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it but if it is a habit that you are trying to break then just having that distinction of, okay, this is a proper meal and I'm going to sit down at the table and eat it. It can just help with that and with breaking associations. Similarly, if you are somebody who does sometimes binge eat and you maybe sit on the floor or just eat straight out of a packet or a tub, then actually using proper cutlery and sitting in a different location can all help to remove the association that you have between eating and binging, if that makes sense. And the bread is just two slices of Tesco wholemeal sourdough bread. When I first started on my recovery journey, I found it really helped to plan all my meals for the week in advance because it just it took me so long to do meal planning and it just made me so so anxious but it means that every time I went into the kitchen I would know exactly what it was that I was going in to make I wouldn't be standing there staring into the fridge paralyzed by indecision and I would just go in and make whatever it was that I was supposed to be making or get whatever I was supposed to be getting. I wouldn't allow myself to think, oh, should I be having this? Or maybe I should have something different. I just couldn't deal with that. So I, I was just laser focused. This is what I'm getting. Go in, get it and go through and eat it. And that's just what worked for me. It might work for you it might not. I'm at a stage now where I do still plan my meals for the entire week, but
but I can be a bit more flexible about things than I used to be. And I definitely don't get the same panic or anxiety about prepping food or if I suddenly decide that actually I want butter on my bread, not cream cheese. So the reason that I've cut the bread the way I have is just to make it easier to dunk into the soup because I've found in the past when I dunk the whole slice and I bite it, I get soup dripping down the edges of my face and I have actually burned my chin quite badly on a number of occasions. So it's to avoid any hot soup related injuries. I'm just gonna take this through, then I'll get my soup out the microwave. I also find it really helpful once I'm finished eating to go and wash up any dishes or put them in the dishwasher I'm very lucky to have. So my soup is done, the bowl is very hot. I'm just gonna take this through and then I'll be back for you guys. It kind of just helps me to draw a line. Okay, I'm finished eating for now, that's it done. I don't have a drink today because when I'm eating soup, I don't tend to want to drink and I actually do have a bottle of water that's sat over on my coffee table that I have been sipping on this morning. If you're feeling at all anxious, close your eyes and I want you to take a deep breath in and then just breathe back out. Breathe back in and breathe back out. I want you to just keep on breathing like that while you listen to me talking. The reason I'm suggesting you do this is that it engages the parasympathetic nervous system. It basically will switch off the flight or fight response, which can cause the anxiety. Just do it for as long as you need to until you start to feel a sense of calm coming over you and your heart rate may be slowing down, the anxiety starting to drain away. And just when you feel ready, start to eat. And if at any point during your meal, you find that you're feeling anxious again, just slow that breathing down because when you're in your parasympathetic nervous system, you cannot simultaneously be anxious because your body just does not work that way. I am a massive fan of sourdough. I get the unsliced loaves and I do slice great big thick wedges like this. I love bread. I guess it's just a case of trying to remember that nothing catastrophic is going to happen just because you eat. There's no other way we can get better. Recovery means we're going to have to eat. We're going to have to gain weight. We're going to hate it, but we're going to do it anyway. And we just have to remember that. And it sucks. I'm a very big fan of Baxter's soup. I do like Heinz as well though. Soup can be a great thing to start with if you're someone who's really struggling to get into regular eating. I did a poll on my Insta stories to find out what time people would most like this video to be uploaded. And the choices were 11 a.m., 12 noon, 1 p.m. or 2 p.m. And it was a three-way tie. Nobody picked 11 a.m which did not surprise me. But because it was a three-way tie, I'm just going to go with 12 p.m. because that was the earliest time selected and those who want to watch it later can. I usually have my lunch around about half 12, so it could make trying to do this kind of thing as a live session in the future a bit tricky. Yoga was good. I thought... I would probably find it quite easy and might want to go up another level. I was aching so much the next day. I definitely need to stay at the beginner level for now. I'm, it's so long since I did any kind of exercise other than walking. I'm just, my body just does not know what is going on. When I say beginner level yoga, we were just doing stretches and then one pose. I used to do dance, so... I did have a lot of flexibility and a lot of strength and I've just lost it all. It's things like this I try to hold on to when I'm struggling. I'm not just gaining weight or health, I'm gaining strength and life. When you're an older adult living alone, as I am, 
it can be really, really difficult to stay motivated in recovery. I find that I just kind of go on to autopilot and think, right, this is what I'm meant to eat. This is when I'm meant to eat it. And I'm not going to question it. I'm just going to do it. And it's just making that commitment and sticking with it. One thing I can definitely recommend when you are in recovery is elasticated waistbands because you will bloat and it's horrible and it feels horrible. And there's absolutely no way around it. You just have to accept that it's going to happen. Try and be as comfortable as possible in your choice of clothing. And it will get better as your body gets more used to being nourished and digesting food properly again. Peppermint oil capsules or peppermint tea can help a little bit. I'm sure I'm telling you stuff you already know and I'm not doing it to be patronising. I guess I'm just trying to voice the thoughts that I have when I'm trying to push myself through the difficult times. I still have days when I really struggle and sometimes I can't push through. And that's fine as long as I keep on trying. I think when you live alone and you don't have people around you to support you, it can be really hard to keep motivated with recovery, especially if you're going through a patch where maybe things aren't going so well. And I know that I would have found it so helpful to have a video like the one that I'm trying to make. But of course, it won't be helpful for everyone because everyone needs different things. In these videos, I'm being very careful to try only to talk about things from my own experience. So, for example, I greatly admire people who can just go all in and I so, so wish I could do it, but it won't work for me. I'm not going to try and tell you how to do all in. It's not my experience. If there's anything else that you want me to do in these videos or anything specific you want me to talk about, please let me know in the comments below or by DM on Instagram. I'm trying to stay away from any subject that could be triggering. My Instagram name is Kaz Loves Cakes, exactly the same as it is on YouTube. But there is a video I did earlier this year, I think, uh, about coping with weight gain. And that's in my eating disorders and mental health playlist. And that's got more of me talking about how I've coped with gaining weight. That part of me really did not want to gain. When you first start to regain weight, it can be a complete savage mindfuck because it does tend to go all on around your stomach area and torso and it can take a long time to actually even itself out over your entire body. And I'm sitting here saying to you that gaining weight is bloody hard. It's hard emotionally. It can be hard physically just adjusting to having a different body shape to the one that you're used to. And I am in recovery. I am not sitting here recovered. I'm talking to you as someone who is going through the journey. I don't want to dwell too much on that subject because I'm not sure it's a particularly helpful thing to be discussing in a video that's meant to be encouraging you to eat. I always do this. I end up having almost no liquid left in the bowl and just a bunch of vegetables. I think it's also important to keep in mind that food is just food. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because you will get another chance to eat this same food again. This is the book that I'm currently reading. I've wanted to read it for quite a while, but I couldn't find a copy of it for ages and then I managed to get one. I'm not very far in, so I can't really tell you 
how I'm finding it. But so far, it does seem to be good. It's written from the point of view of a 40 year old woman called Martha who has a mental illness, which is apparently never revealed to us. And it's about her life. It's maybe not the best book for somebody with mental health issues to read. I don't know yet. I haven't read enough of it. But if you were wondering, this is my current novel. And on Netflix, I've been watching a series called Life After Death. I think that's what it's called. It's about a medium called Tyler Henry. And it's really interesting. It's a documentary. I'm not sure what I believe. I would say I'm open minded, but sceptical. but it was still very interesting to watch. If you've been unwell for many years and you're not really getting any support from mental health services or your GP, you may just feel like it's all hopeless and you're never going to be able to get better, but I promise you, you can recover. I am generally a fast eater and I come from a family of fast eaters so if you're not keeping pace with me that's absolutely fine i probably should mention i'm very lucky i'm in an area where there is good mental health support and not everyone has that but i would say once you start eating just keep going until you get to the end of that meal And if that voice in your head is starting to try and sneak in, just kick it out. It may sometimes feel like you've got no choice, but you do. You can choose to recover. We all need to eat just like we need to breathe. And food is not something that needs to be earned. There have been times when I have been sat there crying as I'm eating. But I know I just had to keep on going. I'm also going to end this video slightly differently to the last one because I'm going to ask you to do something. No, it's not get everyone you know to subscribe to my channel. But only if you think you'll find it helpful. But do feel free to make them subscribe if you want to. When you have finished eating, I want you to set a timer for 20 minutes and I want you to go and sit down and read a book, listen to a podcast, watch TV, do some kind of activity like colouring in or sewing, something you can do sitting down and just sit for 20 minutes. I will link to a video that I made specifically for this reason for anyone who maybe doesn't know what to do with that 20 minutes and it's a nail art tutorial which is really easy, really effective. As I say, the word effective about 20 million times through the video. Um, but that's something that you can watch. It's not 20 minutes long. Um, I think it's about 13. But it's really there just for something to act as a distraction most of my videos are related to food so i wanted one where there was absolutely nothing to do with food in it whatsoever but the reason that i'm suggesting this is because the feelings of guilt that you may be having or discomfort will pass and it's just about learning to ride them out start with 20 minutes build it up until you get to the point where you don't actually even need to think about it anymore and it will happen. But if you're somebody who has a binge restrict cycle to your eating and maybe you purge or you exercise to try and compensate for what you do eat, it's a way of starting to slowly loosen the grip that that behaviour has. 
even if you then go on to engage in that behaviour, it's just about delaying the start of doing it. It is quite hard to know sometimes what to say in these videos because I'm only talking from my own experiences. I'm not a professional. I'm certainly not a substitute for any sort of trained help or support that you may have access to. I'm just a woman with food issues, wanting to help in any way I can other people who have similar issues. Because if I can help even one person either avoid the descent into an eating disorder or help them to get out of it faster, it's all worth it. It's so easy in your late teens and early 20s to think, it's fine, I'll be recovered by the time I'm 30. And then you hit 30, 40, 50, 60. And before you know it, you're 70 years old and you've still got an eating disorder. That is not the kind of life I want for me. It's not the kind of life I want for any of you guys either. For me, it really has just been a case of try and keep trying and even if I fail just keep trying and eventually I started to succeed more and more and so will you. Done. I hope that you found this video helpful. As always feedback positive or constructively critical is welcomed. You can DM me on Instagram at Kaz Loves Cakes if you don't want to post anything publicly. I may do another video like this, but I'll see, I'll see how this one goes down. I am going to be really busy with filming Easter content. And yeah, that's another reason that I decided to, to just do one today because I had the time. My um, filming schedule has actually changed a bit. So I now do most of my filming on a Monday, a bit on a Tuesday, and I can sometimes get some done on a Sunday. And I'm filming this at Thursday lunchtime, which is currently the only lunchtime of the week at which I can film. I'm going to stop talking. You'll have heard more than enough of my voice by now, I think. As I said, there will be a link, it should be on the screen about now, to my nail art video if it's something you want to watch. If not, that's absolutely fine. Just do whatever is best for you. And take care, and I hope to see you for the next upload. Bye.